yo what is up everybody and we are back with another youtube video uh my name is julius and today we will be working on a project based off a hackathon i attended last year to give you guys some context i'm currently a sophomore attending the university of washington and i don't really have a lot of coding experience since i've only taken a couple of computer science classes i do have a small amount of front-end skills from html CSS, JavaScript, and its framework React, and I've barely touched any backend or databases. However, I'm planning to make this project into a full stack application, so I'm able to learn a lot of the backend and sharpen my skills in the front end. But yeah, this is my first time building an application like this and recording myself, so I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe, and uh, yeah, I'll take you guys with me. So in 2020, I joined my very first hackathon called Dubhacks, and at this time, I barely had any coding experience, only HTML and CSS because I just started to learn how to code a few months ago. And also, I've never really heard of a hackathon until that time. So I met my team, and we ended up having an idea to create an educational project that promotes communication and interaction in schools and classrooms. We named our team and project Beehive. And yes, that is with three E's since the beehive with two E's domain was already taken. We didn't end up winning, but we were mentioned by a judge as an honorary mention. So maybe our project had some kind of potential. So fast forward about a year later, I decided to revive this project idea. However, using the same project idea probably won't be as effective as I want it to be because there are so many other school applications out there such as Slack, Discord, and Canvas that already use the same idea and they're already established and popular across the school community. So I decided to alter the project just a little bit. I maintained the focus on communication and interaction in schools, but rather than students inside classrooms, it will be student clubs or student organizations within schools or any school outside of them. Now this application that I plan on creating would provide various necessities for these clubs. They can promote themselves, partner, or compete with other clubs. And these other clubs can be within their school or other schools in the state or across the country. So essentially, for example, you can have two clubs that can connect with each other, partner with each other, and they have a same idea and they can consolidate their goals into one big collaborative project. And then on the other hand, you can have two clubs that can compete with each other. So for example, you can have a chemistry club from one school and then another chemistry club from another school and they can compete with each other. Now the question is, will this project work and be successful? Probably not. But either way this project goes, I definitely see this as a great project to do and learn from. Now the only question is, how do I build this? After searching through many tutorials on YouTube, I finally came to the conclusion to use the PERN stack, which it stands for Postgres, Express, React, and Node. I came across a really good tutorial under Free Code Camp, and the project was being built and taught by another channel called the Stoic Programmer, whose channel was just what I was looking for. And I almost forgot. Because this project was based off a previous hackathon project called Beehive, I wanted to make the name of this new project based off of it. This is Project Cohive. I started off by learning to create a simple REST API, which handles the creation, retrieving, editing, and deleting of clubs, otherwise known as post, get, put, and delete, which are HTTP methods. I also was able to set up our Postgres database through the terminal to handle our data and the actions. You can create a SQL file in VS Code and copy over the commands to your terminal. Finally, I would use Postman to test this out and see if all my methods work the way they should be. So the clubs can't exist without a user. I began by creating my users table in the SQL file and reformatting the clubs table to match. I think we can remove club ID from the users table since we already have a members table. With the members table, it's acting like a relationship between the two entities of the club and the user. I then had to use a composite primary key to ensure uniqueness of the member. Now we're gonna be looking to use JWT for our user registration and login routes. I 
I began by separating all the routes rather than putting it in a single file. I first started by creating the register route. We can first check if a user exists by checking if the email the person inputs in the registration form already exists in the database. We then want to encrypt the password the user inputs. So for example, if the user inputs a password of I love Fairlane, we will receive a response of this. Finally, we would enter our, our new user and generate our JWT token based off the user ID. So you'll see with JWT that it converts the data to sort of this base64 format, which also makes the information easier and faster to send. And it's actually determining if that person's data is not fake as well. We should first check if a token exists in our headers. We can accomplish that by using a middleware. So first, we can create a middleware folder and have a file called authorize.js. This will allow us to check if the token exists in our headers through the use of a payload. So if it is verified that there is a token, it will return us a payload that we can use within our routes. And we can create this route or any route and we can just insert this middleware in it and it will consistently verify that there's a JW token whenever we refresh. So essentially our authorize.js middleware file does all the work for us. We also have another file in our middleware folder called the valid info.js file. This is essentially just checking if we have all of the fields filled out when you register or log in or if you have a valid email format. Now I began working on the clubs. I realized when a user that is logged in creates a club, we have to automatically make that user an owner. At first, I was thinking each club can sort of be like LinkedIn, where it will just show the list of people and their description, which will indicate what role they have. But then I thought of something like Discord, where they legitimately and visually have a role within the club and they have certain permissions based on the role they have. This will simulate how an actual club in real life operates based off the positions of certain members. Now I'm planning to showcase all of the clubs in a certain clubs page, but in order for a club to be publicly released and viewed, they have to have at least six approved members. If the club is less than six members, we will label the club as not released and it will not be shown on the main feed of our site. For the table, I used a query where it would give us the member count by using group by. This would give us the quantity of how many times the club ID appeared in the members table, indicating how many members are in that certain club. Then to filter out the clubs that are greater than six, I can use a for in loop to get the member count of each club and check if it's greater than six. And if it is, we push it to an array and send that public clubs array as our JSON response. How will a user join a club as a member? So first, the user would have to request membership and then anyone with the role greater than member, so for example, the president, vice president, or any other significant role can approve the pending person. I tested out just adding a new column in the members table called pending, which will just be a boolean value. So this is the table when a user requests membership. Pending will be set to true and once they're approved, it will be set to false. And this is the table when a high rank position member of the club approves a pending member. I want to add sort of a following feature to represent the popularity of a club. So I created a separate followers count table and we can just update both tables individually which will be much more organized and effective. And also when one creates a club, we will automatically populate the follow table with the created club and set the follow count value to zero. I combine the follow and unfollow routes where essentially we're going to make the check if they are followed or not all in this one route. So yeah, this wraps up the first episode of this project. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. In the next episode, we'll be mainly working on the front end and using Google Firebase to hopefully set up our image uploading for clubs and users. Thank you guys for watching. I really enjoyed making this video and uh, make sure to leave a like and subscribe. And uh, until the end, peace.